what up world, this is your boy Ux again, this time I'm out here in Sacramento, California to SACCON 2013. This place was amazing and full of all things DIY, you know, do it yourself. From the custom booths to the cosplay costumes, these people have put countless hours of planning and creativity into dressing up as their favorite anime, superhero, video game, movie, or cartoon characters, you know, their vision of who they want to be. I think if I was a dress up, I would be Lazy Couch Potato Kratos from the video game God of War. We walked up and down the big vendor hall full of booths selling fashion items, rare collectibles and much more. Getting to meet all these like minded people from vendors to attendees to the panelists. Actually we got a chance to catch up with one of them, check it out. I'm Phil Lamar, I'm an actor, voice actor, you know, Matt TV, Pulp Fiction, I did voices of Samurai Jack, Hermes on Futurama, and um, Green Lantern on the Justice League and Justice League on the series. No evil shall escape my sight. When did I know I wanted to be an actor? Actually, it was sort of after I had been acting for about 10 years. I mean, I started doing plays in junior high, but it wasn't until after college when I actually had to decide whether or not to pursue it as a career. This is the thing that brings me the most joy. So I would be a fool not to try to pursue it. Actually, my very first job was on cartoon. I was in high school with Mr. T cartoon, but I really started uh, pursuing it right about the time I was doing Mad TV, because we had these claymation uh, things, and they had the cast do the voices for that. So that was where I really got my first experience. I uh, studied and was a member of the Groundling Theater in LA. It's an improv comedy and uh, sketch comedy troupe. Basically, you know, every funny person in the last 40 years, somebody's come to be there. For me, the coolest thing about doing voiceover is the range of characters you get to play. I mean, you know, on, on camera, you're limited by how you look and to a certain extent what you can portray, but mostly by how you look. In voiceover, you're not. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how I look. As long as I can imagine it and translate that imagination down to here, you know, I might get the job. I mean, as far as people who've influenced me in the past, I would love to meet uh, Sidney Poitier. He, he was the first black actor to win the Best Acting Oscar. Um, he came up in the 50s and 60s, a time when doing drama, a time when uh, dramatic opportunities for black actors were almost non-existent. He basically created the black leading man. Hey, this is Phil Lamar, and you're in the mix with Bay Ling. I spent most of my time at SatCon in the room where all kinds of art was going on. From people's drawings of Obi-Wan Kenobi to Star Trek to the Joker to anime characters I had never even seen before. You could pretty much find anything here. From collectible and customized buttons to paintings of all the Batman villains in the DC Universe to the Joker's face through his famous quote. There was photography of being on the set with directors, rare comic books like Superman issue number one to manga, to people who design and create their own. There was folks who had a machine that could draw on glass, people who would knit custom items and much more. There was even movie posters that went all the way back to when movies first started showing. People sold video games to custom stained glass you hang from your windows. The art world was heavily involved in SatCon. So was the hustle. There was anime movies, DVDs of all different stuff, knives, rare toys, and collector's items. There was even a gun off the original set of Indiana Jones movie going for a thousand bucks. Now that is what I call a con man. There was even the creator of one of my favorite cartoons ever made there. Just chilling, talking to fans, and signing drawn pics. And we had a chance to catch up with him also. Check it out. John Kay. I'm at the uh, SACCon in Sacramento, drawing pictures and meeting fans and having a good time. Buying comic books. 
I grew up watching old cartoons like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and uh, Popeye and stuff like that. So that's all I ever did when I was a kid is I drew cartoons. And when I grew up, that's the only thing I knew how to do. So I, uh, so I did. Well, uh, it, I think what happened was um, it was the first big cable hit. Uh, and then other cable, other cable stations came along, Cartoon Network, and they took advantage of the new style uh, because the regular networks were all very conservative and old-fashioned. So there was kind of a revolution in the 90s. Dexter's Laboratory and Cow and Chicken and all the, they called them creator-driven cartoons. So, yeah, I guess I must have influenced some of those. I was very excited. I was more excited actually when we got our first fan letter, which was the day after it aired. And that was pretty good. It was from a little kid named Anthony. He said, Dear Ren and Stampy, uh, please come visit us in our country, the United States of America. Oh, and P.S. Bring your costumes. And we liked the letter so much that we made a whole cartoon about it called Visit to Anthony. So Ren and Stampy were living in Yugoslavia. And they get the letter and they decide to go to the U to, to America. And they walk across the Atlantic Ocean and they live with Anthony for uh, a week. And I just did what I thought was fun. You know, me and a bunch of other cartoonists got together and we just said, let's make ourselves laugh and we'll do stuff that we, we know kids like. Burgers and farts and stuff like that. You're in the mix with Bay Lingle. Yes, sir, I like it.